So let's do something completely different. Um, because, you know, that's what I do. I start two or three projects and then I'll start another project. But this should be only a weekend project. But, you know, it seems like a for me a weekend project takes a week or two. But this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And you've already seen the title of the video, so you know I'm making a spot welder. I've already done some work off camera just because it was so, you know, boring and not really much to it. So I'll just explain what I have here so far and then uh, we'll start putting other stuff together. Um, so I'm going to be using a modified transformer from a microwave oven that a friend of mine was nice enough to give me a long time ago. So, you know, th this transformer has been sitting on the floor of my shop for, uh, oh, I don't know, half a year now. And I'm just now getting around to doing something with it. Now, making a spot welder from a transformer like this is not my idea. I definitely do not want to put out the idea or the thought that, that I'm claiming this is my own idea because it's not. Um, I learned how to do this by watching other videos on YouTube. I probably watched, I don't know, five or six or more videos on YouTube, read a few other forums and other things online. And so I really don't know which video I saw first. I don't remember. I mean, I if I knew who thought of this, I would definitely give them credit. Um, but um, I definitely do not want to take the credit for this part of it. The rest of the build I'll gladly take credit for because the way I do things for the rest of the build is kind of my own idea, my own plan. And um, so we'll start with the transformer. And, <coughs> excuse me. So the transformer, as I said, was salvaged out of a microwave. And if we take a look at another transformer, because I just happen to have another one. Hold on here. So here's one that has not been modified. And you'll notice that there are a few different coils in here. There's, there's this coil right here. And a really, you know, just a couple of winds of another coil here in the middle. And then another coil here. This is the one we want right here. Notice the wire here is a little bit bigger diameter than the wire here. This obviously has several more turns in it than this one. Um, and if you don't know how a transformer works, uh, well, there's there's tons of YouTube videos and there's tons of information online. I'm not going to go through all of that. I'll, I'll just say that on a transformer, whatever your primary windings are, uh, you look at the ratio between the number of windings on your primary to the number of windings on your secondary, and you can calculate the, the voltage increase or decrease. So if you have more secondary windings than your primary, then your voltage is going to go up, but the current goes down. If you have less windings here, then the voltage goes down, but your current goes up. And that's what we're going to take advantage of with the spot welder. So to modify one of these for a spot welder, we're going to save the primary, and we're going to get rid of the secondary and this other one here. I have no idea what that one in the middle is for, but we'll get rid of all of this. And again, we're getting rid of the one with the really fine skinny wire. That's what we're getting rid of. Okay. I've seen a couple of different ways to do this. I have seen people actually cut the welds. You'll see there's a little, there is a seam. I don't know how well this is showing up in the camera here. There is a seam right here. And I've seen people just cut the welds to take all of this apart and then pull the whole coil off, put the new coil and weld it back together. That's not the way I did it. The other way that I've seen to do it, and again, I don't remember who I saw do what, but the other way is to take a hacksaw and just slice right through that secondary coil. Just slice right through here and then take a hammer and a punch and just drive out the rest. And it actually does come out a little easier than I thought. I mean, it was still quite a bit of work, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. And this is what it looks like after all of that has been removed. So um, you can see I cut off the one end and just kind of drove it out, punched it out with a, with a brass drift and a hammer and uh, got all of this mess out of it. And that's got a little bit of weight to it. So that'll go in my recycle bin. And once you remove 
the coils you don't want. And now notice this one actually has three lugs on it. And one reason why I did not use this one is because I'm not sure exactly what that third lug is for. I'm 98% sure that I want to use, if I did use this one, I would want to use these two and just not tap into this one. But again, I'm not 100% positive because if you look at the one that I did use, there's only two lugs, which makes it nice and easy. Okay, now, after you remove, after you remove that, that coil, then we rewrap it with our own, with our own wire here. Now again, I don't know if the exact gauge matters. Um, I used a two gauge cable. I've seen people use a little bit thinner, seen people use a little bit thicker. I just chose to use a two gauge cable and I wrapped that in twice, fed it through, wrapped it around, wrapped it around, and that was it. So I guess you'd call that two turns. You can see two here and like one here, but I guess that makes two turns. I've seen people do more, uh, but the thing is, the more turns you put in, the higher the output voltage would be and the less the amperage is. Um, I, won't, uh, I don't know exactly the voltage I'm going to be getting out of this. Um, I'm thinking it's going to be like two or three volts, maybe. Uh, Amperage-wise, uh, I don't know, enough to burn through still. So that's the coil. Now I do have some ideas for connecting this to the rods. I'll go through that later. So that's the coil. Uh, next up, we need the... Let me get this out of the way. We need the rods. So we have these two rods here. And what happens is that heavy cable ties into these rods. You clamp your steel down between here and you turn it on and the current flow through here. Uh, the steel has a higher resistance than these, so the steel gets hot and uh, melts together. These are nothing more than um, copper pipe, plumbing pipe with a brass end on it. Now I turned the brass end down on the lathe. I uh, just had some round bar stock, put it on the lathe, um, just turned it down to a diameter. I really don't know what that is. I made them two inches long and I cut a 60 degree angle on the point here. And again, I just picked 60 degrees because that's what looked best. Uh, to attach it to the, bar, the uh, rod, um, I flattened the end a little bit hammered in another piece of brass, and I drilled through here, drilled through here and tapped it for a bolt. And the exact sizes and dimensions really don't matter. Uh, at least I hope they don't. I just made it what looked like what would work. You don't want a bolt too thin that you'll strip the threads out, or you don't want that to get loose. You want that to be nice and tight and solid here. So I picked a big enough bolt uh, you know, one reason why I'm not giving exact sizes and dimensions here is because, you know, I'm, I'm not intending for this to be a step-by-step -step how to video, obviously. I don't usually do step-by-step. -step. Um, in my opinion, you know, people who are into building things, making things, usually if you see something made, you see how somebody else did it, you can figure out how to do it on your own. I don't think I need to give you step-by-step -step instructions and exact dimensions. I basically just did what looked good for me and what looked like should work. Okay. Um, so anyways, I just made two of those and um, that'll be the parts that, uh, you know, that, that's the business end here. All right. Uh, next up, I bought this on eBay. This is a time delay relay. Has a time delay from zero to 10 seconds, settable in one half second increments. And the idea behind this is, is when you energize this, it will energize and the contacts will pull, there's two contacts in here, the contacts will pull for the set amount of time and then relax. So this will give me, or should give me, very consistent uh, welds. If I needed to do a, a, a long line of welded points, um, you know, if I just tried to do it manually and let's say one point was half a second, another one was three quarter second, maybe another one was a quarter second, and I did one for a second, all of those are going to look a little bit different. So by setting this to the exact time that I need, 
every weld point will be the same. Uh, well, they'll be the same, and they should look the same, and they should all be the same strength. Uh, I think this was about $10 on eBay. Uh, now, this has two contacts. Each contact can handle 5 amps. So if I wire them in parallel, I can handle 10 amps through this. I honestly don't know if 10 amps is good enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this first without this. I will check the current flow of the uh, primary coil. And if it's more than 10 amps, then I'll have to drive, have to use this to drive another relay. If it's 10 amps or less, then I can use this. Now I'm assuming that's 10 amps or, or 5 amps each continuous, which means that momentarily can handle, um, I'm just going to make up a number, 8 amps. But again, that's just a made up number. So um, we'll see how this performs first without this to decide if I need another relay or not. Okay. The other thing I really want with this is this foot pedal. I got this from Harbor Freight. Uh, this is capable of handling, um, I think, 15 amps, I think. I don't remember exactly. Um, but I really want to be able to hold my parts in place and then turn it on with, with the foot pedal. Now, one thing I don't like about this foot switch is it has a cord on the side here that I assume you plug into the wall, then an outlet here that you plug your device into, which is nice if you want just a generic foot pedal to control any appliance. But I want this dedicated to the spot welder, so I only want one cable. I don't want two cords coming into this. So I'm going to rewire the inside of this, hopefully, possibly. That'll be the next thing I do is to see if I can rewire this. So this one line will be hardwired into the spot welder. And um, so then what will happen is I'll step on the pedal. That will start the weld for a second, give or take a little bit, and then relax and stop the weld. One other thing that I need to think about is putting all of this stuff in something that will hold all of this stuff. You know, I need a, I need a box or a container, something. I'll, right now I'm thinking of making that out of wood. Um, some other uh, videos I've seen, they actually made these arms out of wood and they just made the cable come all the way to the front here. Really didn't like the look of that. Um, I, it's just my personal preference. I, I, I didn't like that. Uh, if, if that's how you want to do it, then that, that's fine. And keep in mind, what I'm doing here, this is just the way I'm doing it. Um, there's probably countless ways you could do this, which again is another reason why I'm not giving you step-by-step -step with measured drawings because I don't even know if this is the best way to do it. This is just the way I'm deciding to do it. Um, I'm just hoping that, you know, if, if you're wanting to build a spot welder, you can get some ideas from me. I, I also, I highly recommend that you watch all of the other YouTube videos out. There are people who have also made a spot welder and you'll get a few ideas from each person. Uh, you know, if you only picked up one little idea from me that you liked, uh, that's great. Um, then the video has, has served its purpose. So I also need to work out the mechanism for clamping this down. So this one will be solid stationary, and this one will be on a pivot that will come down and clamp it down, and that needs to be on some sort of device that will lock it down when I clamp it. Um, some type of a, um, like a bi-stable mechanism or, or something like that, kind of like how vice grips would work. And that would be at uh, that far end over here by the rest of the box. So I still have to figure that out. I have a few ideas. Um, the main box, I'm okay making the, the main container out of wood. Um, that doesn't bother me so much, but uh, I wanted the arms to be like that. These actually turned out exactly the way I was, uh, I was hoping they would turn out. Um, what else? Uh, I think for now, I think that's okay for now. Um, what we'll do, let me put all this stuff away. We will unbox the foot pedal and uh, let's take a look at the inside of this and see if it's even possible to rewire it the way I want to. All right, so here's a foot pedal. And you know, I did get it from Harbor Freight. Uh, one, one reason why I like Harbor Freight is because their stuff is cheap enough that if you want a tool that you know you're gonna modify and you're gonna cut apart and, and work on and stuff, then that's okay. Um, Cause if it doesn't work out, you're not gonna waste a whole lot of money in that. But just first impressions, I mean, this thing is just really, 
I don't know, it's just a lot cheaper than I cheaper looking than I thought. And the bottom of this is actually curved. I, it probably doesn't come up on the camera very well. But the bottom of that actually has a curve to it. So when you put it on the floor, it's going to rock a little bit. But eh, whatever, it'll it'll serve its purpose, I hope. Um, I did look at the instructions just long enough to verify that this is rated for 15 amps. Again, I'm assuming it's 15 amps continuous. So even if the welder does pull 20 amps or so for a half a second or a second and a half or so, that should be fine, I'm hoping. Um, again, if it, if it blows up the first time I use it, uh, it wasn't a whole lot of money wasted. Um, so I just pulled a screw out of the hinge point. I can feel there's a spring in here, and there's a captive nut on that side. See if that'll come out before I drop it and lose it. There's that. And this is all it is. Just to get that rid of that before I lose that. So that should be fairly easy to, uh, to modify. I'll just um, I'll keep the cord coming out of the side. I'll get rid of the plug here. And I'll just take um, I'll just take the, uh, the white and the black through the contacts of the switch. And then this end, um, I'll, I'll actually cut the plug off of that. But the wires coming out of here will just go to the main control, um, giving power to the relay in the primary coil. So that should work out pretty well. Let me uh, get this apart and rewired, and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. Okay, so that was actually easier than I thought. Um, the hardest part was getting this thing out. Uh, I just I just cut the wires that were soldered to here, but squeezing those tabs in enough to get that to come out of the hole was actually the hardest thing. Um, it's actually a pretty nice little plug. I'll save onto that for something else maybe later. I don't know. Um, I just cut out the, the ground wire. They had a ground wire screwed into the plastic piece here. Uh, and, and that's not really as bad as you might think initially because this entire box is plastic. There's nothing in here to short out. So having a ground wire connected to that is just completely pointless. So I got rid of the ground wire. The, the black wire from the plug coming in, which you probably can't see because it's black inside of the box, that black wire was already connected to the switch. And the white wire was... That end of the white wire was actually just plugged into this piece of the white wire that was soldered on to the plug here. So I just pulled that apart and then just plugged it onto the other part of the switch here, which is where the old black wire was plugged onto. So basically, I unplugged one wire, plugged another wire on, took out the other socket, and cut off the ground. I mean, it was, it was just as easy as that. So now, you see my meter here, and listen for the beep. Yeah, can you hear that? So now that just works. I step on the pedal and it'll turn on the welder. So that's that. Piece of cake. So let me put all this back together and uh, we'll see what the next step is. So I did quite a bit more work off camera. You can kind of see that's about the size, the length of it. I'm trying to get it all fit in here. And um, you know, I planned on doing more work on camera, but Everything I've done so far is basically just cutting and drilling and screwing wood. Uh, if we take a little closer look here, uh, we'll see this top part, you know, that just kind of raises up and down. And, uh, of course, to get the ends to meet here. I still need to make a latching mechanism that'll go here. That'll kind of press and hold that down when I actually go to do the weld. Um, but again, everything I've done so far up to this point has been nothing more than just cutting and drilling and screwing wood together. Uh, nothing too, uh, you know, nothing too complicated. And once I get it tested and, and working properly, I, I may go through and replace some of the wood. Um, maybe these side pieces with aluminum. Uh, I got to keep that wood for insulation purposes. But the little latch thing up here I'm going to make, I'll do that first with wood. And once I get that confirmed working fine, then I might make it out of aluminum parts or something like that. Now I do want to show you, and I'll, I'll, the next thing I want to do here is I want to show you how I connected the cable here. And um, so I'm going to go through and uh, I'll put the camera at a different angle. So and I'll go through and I'll show you how we connect here to here. Now as you can see, to start off with, I drilled a hole through and cut a slot so that can get you know squeezed together with the clamps that you see here. 
um, but it's a little more to it than just shoving the wires in and squeezing it down. So let me, uh, let me get a better camera angle here and I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so like I said, uh, the way I'm doing it is only one way to do it. There's probably, you know, there's probably countless ways of doing this. Um, but, which again, is, as I said, is one reason why I'm not giving, you know, step by step with dimensions and all that because, uh, you know, it's not super critical here. Uh, but I will show you exactly how I connected this in here. And keep in mind, this will only work if you use the same stuff I did. I used a number two, number two gauge cable. I used a half inch copper pipe here. And I'm using one of these couplers. This is a three eighths, well, it says three eighths by quarter inch bushing. And um, so it's got a skinny end and a, and a fat end. And I'm using this because it does fit in here. It's a little bit loose in here. Um, but that cable does, it fits in there pretty nicely. So the first thing we need to do here is strip back this cable um, approximately, I think I did about an inch and a half. Um, and let me get my mark here. And I'll just mark off, just mark off about uh, an inch and a half here. Good enough. And I'm just going to cut gently because I don't want to cut through any of the uh, the strands right. that should if I cut deep enough well let's try that again there we go a little bit better. Didn't cut deep enough first time. There we go. I swear this went much better when I did it off camera. And there's a little bit of paper in here as well. We'll get rid of that. All right. Now, the nice thing about this is that bigger side, the bigger side fits really snugly over top of that insulation here. So what I want to do is I want to just kind of mark so I know when it's in all the way. And we'll just take all of this, uh, all of this wire and we'll feed it through here. It'll be a little bit of a pain to get all of them in there. Yeah, missed a few. Again, you know, it just figures that the first one I did went pretty much almost perfect. There we go. So that's on here. Now it's a little bit tight. So what I did was I used a little bit not much, but a little bit of um, silicon oil here. And yeah, I don't want to make a huge mess. I'm just going to drip a little bit of that on the rubber part. Might help to open the bottle. And that will help that slide on there. So we get it started. There you go, maybe. You're gonna cooperate, there we go. Just like that. So that is all the way on there. And get rid of that. So remember I said that this is a little bit loose inside of here. Well, we're gonna make up the difference with the outer strands of the wire here. So we're just going to start spreading this wire apart. And we're just going to get a layer all the way around the outer strands all the way around this way. Get rid of some of those.
and you want just enough so that it's going to be snug inside of that pipe here. So if we just give that a little trial fit here, and that is just about what we want right there. Now it gets a little bit tight because remember, uh, that end is a little bit fatter. So we do need to trim some of that off. So we'll take some of these, not many, but we'll take, actually, let me just try to shove that in a little bit harder here. Put that in. And it just almost goes. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to trim some of those off. Um, I'm going to do this off camera just because it takes a little bit of time. But I'm going to take just a few of the outer ones and trim it right about here. Okay, so I got that to push in nice and firm and tight here. So just kind of pull that back out. Okay, so it looks something a little bit like that. Now I can put a few more here. So I'm just going to take a few more of these strands here and I'm just going to kind of cut those off. Those, just kind of fold those back a little bit more. But the bulk of these, the bulk of these, we can just kind of snip those right off. Just like that. And don't want to forget our clamps. Now I'm using two of these clamps. Um, just normal hose clamps. You could probably, you know, you could probably just use one, but, you know, for maximum squeeziness, I'm going to use two. Just put those on there first, and then we'll put this back inside. Put that back inside all the way. And then we can move our clamps in position and tighten those down. Come on. And let me find my driver of screws. Hold on, I'll be right back. Loosen this up just a little bit. I want that all the way back. Why is that not moving? There it goes. And we'll just kind of crank that down. Go with the other one. Crank that one down. Yep, and I overdid that one. Figures. Take this one off. Throw it away. Good thing about a bag of these. So these do have these do have a limit. I'm gonna move this one back. Yeah, careful, those will stab you. Move that one back to here. And these can kind of be a pain to restart unless you kind of give that a little bit of a bend in. And oh, thought I had it. There it goes. Nope. There it goes. Okay. And don't over torque them. Because they will fail. All right, and that's it. That is nice and secured in there. And the, the nice thing about this is the insulation here. That actually goes all the way into about here, and then it's wires are folded back. So that actually kind of, you know, in my mind, kind of acts like a uh, strain relief for that. Now, one thing I did kind of screw up. Um, I mounted this too far back because right now with that connected, with that cable, with the pull on that cable, it's it's lifting my uh, it's lifting my jaws. It won't let. Um, let me show you real quick. It's pulling that. There it is. It's pulling that up. So hopefully, should be an easy fix. I just have to position this forward a little bit, and uh, that'll put a little bit of a kink here. 
but it'll give me more slack here. And, and you'll notice I did purposely make this one longer and this end here shorter than the one on the bottom so that it would have plenty of room to, to kind of move this way. Okay, but I got to reposition this that way a little bit more. Okay, so let me do that. I'll do it off camera because it's just, you know, pulling screws out and putting screws back in. So I'll do that off camera. When we come back, um, I will go ahead and connect electrical to this just so we can do a test. Um, it's going to be just a quick down and dirty wrapping the wires on it. Uh, no timer. Uh, I'll put the foot pedal on it because I just want to see how much current this pulls so I can see um, if this will handle it or not. So uh, let me do that and I'll be right back with you. Okay, keep in mind, this wiring is only temporary so I can get a reading of the current draw um, on the primary coil. On the other end, you can see I have it connected there. I only had to move that forward about a half an inch. It's gonna work fine. fine. On the other end, I have a couple of pieces, uh, small pieces of steel. That black tape, electrical tape, that's only there to keep the tension down on the steel parts because I have not made the top part here that will hold the top lever down, if that makes any sense. I was just going to put a rubber band around that, but I don't have a rubber band that I could find. So again, that tape is just there to keep the tension down on those points. So I'm going to give it a quick press of the pedal here. I'll probably just do about a second or so and I'm going to be watching the amperage here and hopefully it, it does something. So uh, here's nothing. And I heard some humming and that was about all. I don't see any smoke. Let me see what that piece looks like here real quick. Hold on. All right, well, it did weld. It put those two pieces together. It's still pretty warm. Looks pretty good here. On that side, doesn't really, I mean, you can see a mark, obviously, but um, I don't know. I'm gonna do it again, and um, I guess I'll go back and look at the video on the uh, amp meter, and because uh, I didn't really see much there, but I'll, I'll do it again here, hold on. Okay, I changed the setting. Maybe I get a better read on it this time. All right, let's try it again. And that got up to, that's why I didn't get a good reading, because it did hit 20 amps. And at first I had that set to 20 amps, so I kind of exceeded the limit on that. So that did pull about 20 amps. So that might be a problem. Okay, so this is my attempt of trying to pull that apart. Again, I just had a three, I think three welds on there. And uh, the first one, the first one did break, but to deform the metal that much, before it actually breaks a weld. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I mean, that, that's really stuck on there pretty well. And yeah, so it did pull more amps than I was hoping for. So, which means now the foot pedal, like I said, the foot pedal was rated for 15 and it's still, I mean, it's not even warm. It doesn't smell burned or anything. So I think, again, I think it's 15 amps continuous so it can handle I'm sure it can handle 20 or more for a few seconds at a time. Um, and one thing, you know, I'm a little bit, uh, I'm kind of regretting buying that foot pedal because it's nothing more than just a little momentary contact switch and a little pedal box. I could have easily have just made that out of some pieces of wood or 3D printed something or something and saved myself about 15 bucks. I mean, I probably could have got a switch for a couple of bucks and made the rest for nothing. But, oh well, that's fine. Um, it works. If it does fry, I'll just make a new one. So what I'm gonna to have to do for now is, if I wanna use this, I'm gonna to have to have this control something else that can handle 20 amps or more. So I'll probably just have to connect this into a solid state relay that's designed to handle the 20 amps. Um, so that's kind of, uh, kind of a bummer, but Eh, it'll be okay. I just have to order one more part on eBay and wait another week for that to come in before I can really continue with this. I mean, I can leave it as is. I can just run it as is uh, because it does work. Um, so I can continue to build the handle part here that clamps that down. So there's more I can do on this. But for now, I'm going to go on eBay and order some parts. So 
Anyways, I, I did not plan on this being a two-part video, but it's um, beginning to take way too long. Um, I know some of these other guys on YouTube, they made their whole thing and built it and test it and explained it in probably a 10 minute video, but um, I don't know, I need more time than that. So I'll go ahead and end this one here. Uh, I'll make it a part one. Um, when I finish the rest of this, uh, that'll be part two, just kind of wrapping it up and finishing it. But hopefully you guys got, you guys got enough out of this first video just to kind of see that you can make a fully functional spot welder that, I mean, this this does some really nice looking, uh, nice looking spots here, spot welds here, and they're strong. Um, you know, this thing, this thing's pretty much good as is. I just want it to be more functional and more better. So, um, and if, you know, as far as cost goes, if I would have made the foot pedal myself, I could have done this whole thing for, you know, less than 40 bucks. Um, maybe even less than 30, you know, if I would have done a few things different. But, um, you know, and as far as, again, as far as the way I attach the cables here, I'm sure there's a few other ways to do it. I thought about just soldering all that in, but I want this to be easily re removable. I want to be able to take it apart easily. Um, so that that's one thing I was keeping in mind as I was building it. Uh, was was ease of disassembly, ease of maintenance. Um, so anyways, I'm going to end this one here because it'll probably be a while before I come up with part two. Might be a couple of weeks before I get to part two. Um, but um, just because of the wiring and stuff. But when I come back with part two, I'll go over connecting the relays and the wiring and everything. Um, but like I said, I mean, as is, I, I could use it right now as is. That's fine. So anyways, I'm going to stop rambling because this video is already way too long, and uh, I'm surprised you've hung around this, this long. So anyways, until next time, as always, thanks for watching.